Hello. Yeah, when Abu Goni, I can carry now. Okay, yeah, yeah, Sunanka. Sunana Abu, when Abu. I will not go for Naisa. I'm quite a boom one day, I'll go for Naisa. I'll quite Katanga, I'll quite Motochi, I'll quite two Kubansi Re. Sunanka Zaka Gaya. She didn't make a Gamaka. Why any? A Nini, Walene, Banganiba. Kaya Sunanka, Wale. What's your name? Bachi Wana. Kaza and Sunny Bachin to Baka Bagashina Gamaka Ba Wale, Abuni, Wani Abu. Kewe ba kajen hausa ni kani hausa ni kaya na rikita dari kita ruana. National limelight. I think one about uh, EFCC uh, because you know corruption is one of the main problems of our society. And people always pay attention to something like that. EFCC was established to actually combat corruption. So you can imagine if it is involved in that kind of corruption that it's trying to combat. It's like a snake trying to eat its own body. That's a very uh, sensitive issue and people all paid attention to it. So when I made a story about, uh, you know, the person trying to, ex uh, to persecute others, but also... Uh, you know, asking for a handout, uh, people really related to that because uh, it happened in reality. Absolutely not, because uh, the platforms on which I publish the videos are not Chinese platforms. These platforms actually are blocked in China. So China has no issue with anything that goes on those platforms. They assume that they don't exist. And the fact that I make my content and put it there, uh, doesn't produce any problem for me. Um, what we I can add is here this kind of society that we have. We can talk about political issues and we can talk about you know our leaders and our government. But in China, it's a different society. They do not allow that. And I think if uh, I was a Chinese trying to make this kind of satire, I will have disappeared a long time ago. In a few years, I would, I would help a lot of young people uh, produce not only videos, but also other things that uh, they can imagine and create, other things that can be helpful and useful to our society. I hope I can inspire a lot of young people uh, to, uh, to create, to invent, and to want to do things without being afraid, without looking at what others are doing in other countries, uh, having the confidence to say, I'm a proud Nigerian and I can do great things. That's why I see myself. There are a lot of other um, pioneers, a lot of people who have done a lot of work for a long time, and I've followed some. Um, but what I think should be noted is how uh, the difference in the kind of content um, the way people react and why it does draw their attention. I think that's something that probably makes our content different. And also another important issue to note is the, the kind of content. Um, people, you know, how society has its cultures and religious values. And to observe that in a video context is difficult for a lot of creators. And that has uh, caused uh, them niche issues so you probably will have just a niche of people that watch yours uh, the one thing that i am lucky to have is a broad niche from the young people to the old people all can watch and relate and uh, many people say they think it's because there is no uh, you know there's no women shaking their bodies there's uh, no, no things that kind of break the religious and cultural laws and that makes it family friendly. Uh, kids can watch, everybody can watch. People are comfortable and confident that they can open it to their parents without being surprised by something that seems inappropriate. Absolutely. I know that kids do watch my content all the time. And uh, my biggest fan is my mother. She is usually one of the first people to watch it. And I know my mom very well. I know the kind of a boy she raised me to be and I will always be that person. 
Uh, so I will always think what is right, what is wrong. Sometimes even it's like borderline gray area, but I will, I will say when kids watch this, what will they take out of it? Are, are they going to take something positive or negative? And that does influence if uh, how I write the story and how I, you know, produce the story. Right now, I don't think it's that lucrative. Uh, I don't think they know how much uh, useful it can be towards uh, self-sustain when it comes to economic value. Uh, when you do research and when you look at uh, some successful content creators abroad or in China, you will see that they are actually making a lot of wealth. Uh, why? Because the content creators understand their value and the value of their work and also the consumers understand the value of the content creators and the value of their work and they are willing to invest into them. Let me give an example. If I did not make a video a day or two, I will have a lot of people saying, where is the new video? Why don't, why don't you make a video? Uh, there's also one guy who recently commented, he said, hey, um, you know, the way you make video, you need to start changing style, you need to add more things, you need to have more people, bring in some cars, bring, bring in some houses, and, you know, change the style, do this, do that, because this is how we like it. And I said, this is a very obvious case of, you still don't understand our relationship. You want me to entertain you, you want me to produce content for you to watch, how much are you willing to invest? You want me to bring cars, you want me to bring houses, I would love to do that. But if you maybe pay five naira, he pays five, a million people pay, pay five naira, I think I can afford that. Other societies do understand that and they try to uh, support their content creators by giving them even if it's a tiny bit, but they do it in large scale and then that helps support and sustain them. But here it doesn't happen. A lot of the content creators here, they make money from advertisements. And uh, you know, some it's just five thousand naira per advertisement, ten thousand naira. The top guy, he gets a hundred thousand naira per advertisement here in uh, in the house uh, content creator stage. So it's not lucrative yet. When the the quality of the content of the creators improve. And when they have more uh, influence, when the videos have more influence, then more people will pay more attention, especially advertisers will pay more attention. And when advertisers do invest, I think people will realize that this is actually uh, something valuable to the society and they might invest. But to be honest, our Nigerian people who watch the phone are not wealthy. Sometimes, some of them, they have to you know, recharge with 100 naira, 200 naira, just to watch my video. So you can imagine me saying, okay, I gave me another 500, just to support me. The society is not financially healthy enough for that. So any content creator who really wants to go out there and produce a lot of content, they must uh, not think that it will bring them money anytime soon. Uh, until the society becomes much financially healthy, people have more money to spend not spend money uh, to buy data just because they are bored and they need to watch something, then that's when the content creators will be making something reasonable. Uh, in China now, content creators, they buy Lamborghinis, they buy houses. Mr. Beast is one of the best content creators in the world, in America. He uses all the money he gets from YouTube and then he shares it to his fans. He buys them planes and cars. He takes them on crazy adventures. He, you know, he says, okay, you can get this plane, you can get this car from the money that he makes. He sends it back and that makes him grow. Um, here we cannot have that yet. Well, I can, I can start to listen when I've been called to, when I've been called an influencer. Um, because numbers numbers don't lie. Uh, when more and more people um, look for you and they feel every time they watch a video, they take something out of it, you cannot deny them. You cannot tell them you guys are liars. And when they said, I've watched your video and I've learned something, it's basically saying, you are influencing me. You are influencing my thinking. And 
I determine what kind of content I want to put out. If this, today I decide not to put out a content, that person doesn't get to learn that one thing that he gets to learn every day. So I think I might be an influencer, but uh, what group is affected the most? I think the little kids, the little kids, to the point where I'm thinking if I have time, which is my biggest problem, is I want to make another channel just for kids, just content for kids, teaching them uh, academics and our cultural norms and our uh, societal norms and you know trying to get them in the right mindset. That's something I would love to do. I want to be a bigger influence on that kind of. When the younger, when uh, uh, the, the young people of a society is uh, healthy, I think that will plant good seeds for the future. As a professional journalist, you don't always just go around looking for trouble, but you, you make sure that when trouble comes, you address it. When there's an issue to address, you don't turn your head to the side. It's like a teacher. If you are in charge of teaching the society something and something bad happens, you have the responsibility to you know, show people what that thing is and to teach them. For example, airplane crashes. Why do they find all that wreckage and they take everything and they piece it together? Why wouldn't they just say, guys, it's your time to die, so just rest in peace because they want to learn something out of it. So no matter what good or bad thing is happening in our society, I think it's our responsibility as journalists to tackle it. So some of the subjects or con uh, the stuff might be very, very sensitive. People will not want that to be touched. But we have a moral obligation to do that. So some of them are very controversial and we know we will get backlash. But we'll still talk about it. It's a really tricky way to go because a lot of things need to come in play for that to happen. One is what we have here, what a lot of content creators make is not something that my parents are proud of. A lot of it. And it can be better. So if they, if the content keeps getting better and has more meaning and is more meaningful, more people will pay attention to it. More people are not going to ju just know Dambello, but they will know a lot of maybe the minister, Dangala Dima, all kind of dance, right? And when there are more, when, when that attention is, is there, even uh, daily trust here and Amenia will want to invest in getting more young people to come and make more content and make and relate more because there are people going out there to watch. You are looking for audience. Advertisers will invest more in that area. Uh, the government will pay more attention to that area. Poli politicians will start to use that area to, you know, to campaign, to spread their agendas. They will invest more. And also, when, when you have that, a lot of the younger people also will think, everybody goes to watch TikTok or everybody goes to watch, watch Instagram. I'm going to start putting more work. Or I'm going to I'm gonna go to school and learn how to make videos to come back and, you know, work on that. And then when you have that, you will probably have teams. You have this one boss who, you know, has some money and he just wants to see a special channel. And he's like, all right, I'm going to get these guys here some money, make a channel. And, you know, all kinds of things will happen. But like I said, a lot of different pieces have to come in play. 